friend is in the handout and help yourself when you uh, leave the room. But what does a Korean American means in global economy? I would like to share my story, a story about what being Korean American means to me and my family. When my son Toby was about 10 and 11, we lived in a community we were the only Asian American family. Toby was apparently teased by his schoolmate for being different. Of course, both my sons, they were born in Evanston, Illinois, and they grew up thinking they are just as American as anyone else, and they are. But every night I told Toby, he was the best looking boy on earth. And Toby was not totally convinced. <laughs> so one day he went to see his favorite teacher, Miss Gordon, his fifth grade English teacher, and asked, who am I? Am I Korean or am I American? Miss Gordon looked at Toby and she said, Toby, you are both. You are like a someone with a two dollars in your pocket as opposed to one dollar in your pocket. Ms. Golden was a great teacher and wonderful human being. It, is, it was a wonderful way to look at someone's ethnic heritage as an enriching and positive life experience. And my son Toby ended up being a good looking Washington lawyer. <laughs> Being an Asian American and woman, I could choose to let my cultural and language barriers overcome me. Instead, I choose to realize I have two dollars in my pocket, I speak two languages, I have a global perspective and experience, and plus I have a valuable network and connections with the people from and in Asian countries. So going forward, it's all about global economy and countries coming together. I would like to see Korean Americans take a full advantage of their global perspective and expertise. We have so much to offer this country and America has much to offer us Thank you, Happy New Year, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Let me uh, turn to uh, Mr. Sam Kwok. Thank you, Jack, for your <coughs> nice introduction of us. I'm allowed to speak for 10 minutes, so even though I want to mention the ambassador's name, please forgive me not mentioning your names. But anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, many distinguished guests, it is an honor for me invited to speak on behalf of the Federation of Korean Association USA to celebrate Korean heritage in connection with January 13th, Korean American Day, and also to celebrate 25th anniversary of KEI. Mr. Sung Kim, the current actual president of the Federation of Korean Association, was unfortunately not able to come today, but sends his sincere regrets and greetings to all of you who are here. As part of our celebration of Korean heritage in, to uh, mark our Korean American Day, I want to just uh, share one common Korean a characteristic of Korean Americans, namely hard work. Korean American immigrants have realized that hard work Long hours are needed to make their American dreams come true. We did not come looking for just a handout, but we came here for opportunity to be fairly rewarded for our labors 
and our contributions. Because we have our own dreams in this new land, and also because we have visions of new futures in this new land, we've been able to cope with and overcome many difficulties and obstacles. Vision and hope for a new future, these are the key elements for Korean-American success. Let me share one simple story from my own experience when I was young. I went junior high school after six years elementary school in a rural area in Korea. There was no bus, no electricity at that time. I walked six miles one way. So by the time you come back home, you are almost exhausted. But you know one thing, when I went to school, we learned, we began to learn English. Everyone decided I was too. But gradually, I found English is too difficult to learn, could not follow the class. So I lost interest, and finally I gave up, and English became the subject I hated most. <laughs> when I went to senior high school in a nearby city, a larger city, in the southern part of a province in Korea, I learned that we are going to have an English conversation class taught by a native American woman. I was curious to see that American lady in person, and I couldn't wait. Finally, that memorable moment came. About 70 students in our classroom became utterly silent as one middle-aged, beautiful American woman entered the classroom. And her name was, I still vividly remember, Mrs. Boyer, B-O-Y-E-R, a missionary's wife. She began speaking to the class a lot of stuff, but nobody seemed to understand. <laughs> and since nobody was responding to her questions, she changed her approach. She selected one row of students in Korea, each row, and then asked each one to speak something in English. You learned for several years. The role she picked was mine. I became very nervous because I couldn't think of anything good to say, anything decent to say. So I was real nervous. As my turn drew closer, I became real nervous, literally despairing. Suddenly, by the grace of God, I finally came up with an idea. What a relief. My turn came, I stood renewed confidence and said, uh, before that, I actually remembered a name of an American movie that I had seen a few days you know, prior. So I liked that movie so much, I went to twice. I saw the movie twice. It was against the school law at that time, you know, to see the law. But I did anyhow. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of the movie, probably some of you might know, Love is a Many Splendors Thing, starring William Holden and Jennifer Jones. So my turn came, I stood up and said, love is a many splendor thing. <laughs> Mrs. Boyer came to me, graciously said, you are very good. <laughs> that moment, that was a turning point for my life. That simple positive comment changed my life. It literally gave me a new hope, a vision for the future. And also it gave me a dream where if I'm good at English, I can go to the United States someday. I had that dream. My dream came, became to go to the United States. Since then, 